Hey guys, Susanna here from The Good Property Company and with my really good friend Arthur from William Arthur Property. Now you've flipped around 15 flips so far. Yep. Uh, uh, this time last year we were in a cocktail bar in Barcelona and we were watching on, on the uh, auction while having a cocktail. I think you made, was it £114,000? After tax, yeah. After tax. Got that, guys? £114,000 on a flip after tax while we're in a cocktail bar in Barcelona, which was quite good fun. But today we're talking about this flip here. So what's the numbers on it? So I purchased it for 337. Um, I spent about 55 to 60. I'm going to put it on the market for offers over 450. So 450 offer offer price, 337 purchase price, and how much spend? Let's say 60%. 60 in total, is that everything? Yes. Okay. But it is a proud moment for me. I don't have a mortgage on it. Woohoo! <laughs> Why don't you have a mortgage on this? But hang on, that's that's a terrible cap return on capital employed. Yeah. Um, why don't you have a mortgage and why do you think that's financially sensible? I, I do too, by the way. Um I bought it without a mortgage from the profits I made in January. I bought it in February of this 2022. Um, I wanted to go back to how I started, which was with cash, um, little lending. I can do what I want when I like. I have no financial pressures of time frame. And yeah, it's, it's a very healthy feeling. So what, not being like in total to the bridging yeah. company and them saying, what have you done? When are you doing it by? We need a report. Yes. We're sending a surveyor around. We're going to charge you for that surveyor, et cetera, et cetera, for commercial funding. Yes. Yes. So so it's a healthy feeling. It takes you back to the beginning yeah. um, when you were a, a young guy doing it and your dad was in as a JV partner. Obviously, yeah. Arthur does it on his own now. Um, but But the critics might say return on capital employed. You've put a lot of capital into this. So your return on capital employed is smaller? Yes. I think um, for me at the time, I didn't have another project to put the capital into. So what's the point in having that money sat there in the bank? Mm. Um, I agree now, I probably could have split that money. However, I've now secured the deals that this cash will move into. So uh, you have how many deals in your deal flow right now? Uh, have a, We've been giggling about this, by the way. I have a very big one that's going to deliver me 15 units. I have um, another one which is going to deliver me three units. And then I have a larger one uh, which will deliver me 16. Units. Mm. So 15, 3 and 16 in one year. So that's 31, 34 units. Uh, so next year is going to be a cash flow interesting yes, year for you. get ready for it. <laughs> so you notice, although I'm sat there going, hey, guys, look at the figures, and I'll do another video for you on what the technique is, our whole conversation today has been about cash flow. Now, we're really good friends, and our conversations are quite regularly about cash flow, because yes. either, I mean, you did once send me a photograph of your bank statement, and on the beginning of the month, you had... 440 I think it was and I was like woohoo and then the end of the month 1000 <laughs> <laughs> so although we're laughing it's Sunday we've had some food we're going to have some coffee and um, the key thing you need to take about the, this is the first video we're, we're recording on this series it's just a chat it's just an amble but the number one thing we're focusing on is cash flow so it felt great to you like I also have properties that are unencumbered and it feels brilliant it feels free and again, other people may say it's not a great return on capital employed, but for you, this was freedom, nobody on your back. But it doesn't mean to say that you've been slow with it, does no. it? No, I put it in February and it's on the market beginning of October. Which is not bad. And you did planning, you got architects plans, design plans. I'm going to do another video to show you how beautiful it is. You've uh, really transformed the garden. You've transformed inside. It's one bed to two bed. It's very shishi inside, by the way, guys. Mm. And, and it's going to absolutely fly out. Mm. So interesting use of cash flow. You might agree, you might disagree, pop your comments in below, but interesting use of cash flow. Do you use all your cash up, which is old school, which I would imagine in the end you and I both are, or do you screech the whole way through a borrowing cash and, and always having like the back, the bank just on your shoulder, like minutes away from, you know, are you making a mistake? If so, we're taking it back. And we're talking the week after the mini mini budget events, which has sent the markets into disarray. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? And and for me, a milestone, I just hit the below 50% loan to value, which I think is fabulous. Uh, and we have lots of discussions about cash flow, don't Because you yes. think I should have more lending in my limited company. 
correct. I think in a limited company, you should be about 60% percent limited. Whereas I'm not, I'm much lower than that. And you kind of disagree with that. Yes, when it's cheap. Yes. So it's not giving you a point, we're giving you a conversation. And that conversation is about cash flow, and that is the number one in conversation you always need to have because it is cash flow that will put you out of business, not profitable projects. Next year is going to be an interesting year for you cash flow wise with 31 projects about to be delivered. Can you imagine that's what it's going to do to its cash flow? Yeah, it's over two years, 31 projects, but I've only got one buy to sell, which will, which will bring in the cash, but the other ones are all buy to keep. So we do our KPIs, our business plans. We, we're really good friends, but we meet once a month. And in we met last week, didn't we? And we focused on your business and, and we had a total conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was uh, I don't have enough money coming in yeah. yeah so what's the solution more projects JV projects so more flips definitely more investor management yes and then also the other thing about investor management is if you're paying quite a high rate of interest privately to an investor if you've got loads of investors that interest rate drops because if you've got it's, it's supply and demand if you've only got one or two investors you kind of, you get comfortable. You get comfortable, you agree higher interest rates and they take a lot of the profit. If you've got like 20 investors, somebody's gone off you 5%, which is much more market target rates than kind of 16% or 12% or what a lot of the private people offer. Yeah, I am looking forward to kind of bringing my my percentage rate down. It will be a, a challenge because I am very comfortable offering you know, 12 to 16%. Wow. But um, it'll be interesting to bring it down to, to like five and six. Yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, when you think I'm sat there like making faces, at one point, and do not do this, I paid 16.67% private funding to an investor. That yeah. is mental. But at the time, I was comfortable in the relationship. I'd done, you know, deal after deal. It was a really good deal for him. And then I was just like, man, what I'm doing is crazy. I need to really bring this down. But I do probably want to bring in this is this project is solely my cash. Um, I have a business which I'm growing my portfolio, which is investor cash at the moment. Mm. And then they'll get paid out, uh, and then they'll go, and you'll end yeah. up owning the portfolio. Yeah, because I'm at the moment trying to add value to those assets and within that within, within what I've bought the investor cash with. So how does it work in your brain? You've got your invest your portfolio, which for you is funded often by investors. Yes. And you're doing planning in a whole bunch of parking strips right now. So you're adding loads of value to get rid of you in a nice way to pay out your investors. And so you're basically you've bought them discounted. You're going to add planning. You're going to get even higher values. Uh, you're going to refinance. So so I've got three strategies, which is kind of one planning game where I buy, uh, add value um, and then I sell. At the moment, I, I do want to build them out one day, but at the moment, I don't have a cash flow. And I've got the portfolio, which is growing the monthly steady income. And then I've got this project, which is a buy to sell, which gives me that kind of lifestyle lump sums. Got you. And in your head, they're quite separate. So yes. different funding parts for different. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And your portfolio is not just residential, is it? No, I've got a mixed bag of resi and commercial. Yeah. Why? Um. I don't want to be solely in the residential market. I think there's strong um, caps coming in if Labour get into power or or there's lots of regulations. But if with commercial tenants, you have more flexibility. You're dealing with uh, business people who understand that this is a business transaction and that if you're not paying rent, you can't have it. Yeah, yeah. But you still keep some resi as well. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. if... For example, we went into a recession and no one's going out spending money. Those businesses are affected and my rent roll is affected. Whereas if I have a mixed use uh, residential and commercial portfolio, I've still got that residential income coming in. It's pretty sensible, isn't it? Yeah. So that's the portfolio funded by investors, adding value to it, commercial and resi. And then they're going to get all paid out because you've added so much extra value in terms of planning uplift and yeah. and building new things in that portfolio. Not I'm going to go and buy more and then add into it. It's literally you've looked at that portfolio and you said, right, I, I can get an, another X million pounds worth of value out of it. 
him. But he's he's bought um, five properties in a row, and now the, the back gardens are going to be uh, a piece of planning, which you're going to sell then, aren't you? Yes, yeah. yeah, that's the one that's hopefully going to come in next. And then that would uh, pay out your investors? So pay out my investors and then give me enough money to run investors for about two years on the large portfolio growth. Got you. So that's that side. And then the next one is planning gain. Um, and they're basically flips, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I, I went into it thinking I was going to build them out, but with building costs, time scales, bridging companies, I'm not... I don't the joys of managing builders. Yeah, and the builders and contracts as labourers. I'm not at that point where I want to... I don't have enough money behind me, I don't think, mm. to do that. But you made over 100 grand, over 100 grand, and over 200 grand in the last three projects I saw you do. Yes. Oh, and they were all planning game, where you added planning and flipped them out. Not bad, is it? And then the third one is simple flips like this one. Yeah. And then also maximising my portfolio, which pays my income. It's pretty sensible, isn't it? Slow and steady. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to be retired by when? 30. But I, my ideal role, <laughs> my deal flow is I won't be cashed out from one of them until I'm 21. So 21? Uh, 31. Oh, sorry. So I'm not going to be retired at 30. Oh, I'll be gonna, 32. <laughs> you're going to miss your target. <laughs> and then what are you going to do? Um, I'm at a point then where I probably work out a strategy to pay down over 20 years, no mortgages or 50% in my limited company. Um, I will still do property, but probably not to such a extreme. Mm. Or you never know, I might be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting conversation, eh? So if you're new to property, um, it's not just all about getting the deal, is it? It's then about identifying the different strategies, a cash flow strategy, a long-term growth strategy, and actually what's your exit route, or not exit route, but like when do you stop? Like I stopped a couple of years ago, I'm chilled out, I, you know, I live in Barcelona, um, but I didn't do it by the time I, I didn't even start at 30, let alone finish. I started at 39. But it's interesting for you to see real life property investors, I hope. Um, and maybe you can take some of this conversation and go, definitely need to keep an eye on cash flow. Definitely need to keep an eye on buying assets and probably need to work with private investors for a period of time and then they get paid out. Definitely need to look at the risk reward of commercial and residential. Definitely need to look at flipping and, and maybe other cash gen. Oh, and you sourced a deal recently as well, didn't yes, you? Yes, I sourced my first deal, but it was uh, to a good friend of mine. So, mm. yeah. And you got paid? Yes. Yeah. So maybe deal sourcing as well to bring in cash and, so, and, and, and ending up at the goal of financial freedom by the time you're 31. Hope that's useful, guys. Good luck to you. I hope you enjoyed that vid. There is a 101 lessons pack if you haven't downloaded it already, 102 pages, I don't stint. If you just click on the link over there, you can download it now.